The Spin-Off Podcast Network. This is Kiwi is back for a brand new season with more inspiring kōrero from special guests including rugby player, father and role model TJ Peronara. My family bring me joy. Rugby brings me joy too, but it's not the same joy as my family brings me. And global dancer and choreographer Kirsten Dodgen. For some reason people think I'm very intimidating. Listen to the new season of This Is Kiwi, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network in collaboration with Kiwi Bank. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my 100th Mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, no, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I'd only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Start your day with the Bulletin, a newsletter from the spin-off summarising New Zealand's biggest breaking stories and highlighting the best reporting from around the country. Sign up for free today at thespinoff.co.nz slash newsletters. NZ's number one entertainment podcast. My name is Richard. I take photos. My business is called Dick Pics. Oh, that is so good. <laughs> From iHeartRadio, play ZM's Flesh, Vaughn and Haley. Available everywhere. And then you hear her go, oh my God. And then I go, mm, oh, <laughs> like that. And then I go, <laughs> and she's like, oh dear. <laughs> Welcome along to the Real Pod, Real Recap of Below Deck Down Under. We're up to episode two. On board today, Alex Casey. Hello. Hello. <laughs> That's um, just me, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, just you, actually. And myself, <laughs> Jane Yee. Duncan Grieve is lost at sea. And we do have T.I. here. As um, he, well, T.I. is like um, the first bait, right? Mm-hmm. He's like the guy that you know is there, but you never see him or in this case hear him. Yeah, or well, the engineers that you meet in the first episode, yeah. and then they only come around when there's a disaster. They, they only turn up. They only turn up when when Hannah Hannah is found with <laughs> with uh, Valium and some pot. But you know that deep down they are like the most talented people on, of course, on board. Of like you know they that's are. why they're there, and they're actually like they're so good at their job. They need to be serious. They um they don't have time to sort of fuck about. No, you know, chatting. Of course not. No. But we don't, do. we don't care about the people who are busy. We, we care about the people who do have time to, to fuck around <laughs> and be on the camera. Um, Below Deck Down Under is on Bravo, 9.30pm Tuesdays. And there's 17 episodes. I don't think we realised when we were like, we're going to recap BDDU that we were, si- we were signing in for such a long charter season. <laughs> I think not enough. It's not enough. Oh, I mean, you know, look, it's off to a great start. And I'm really enjoying yeah. it, and I love it for myself. I just hope everyone else is on board. That's all I'm saying. They, and you know, the crew do need a break from the long se- the long seasons. They can't stay on forever. Well, they we, can't stay on deck forever. We can though, can't we? Oh, we can. We don't have we don't have to do anything. We're just sad <laughs> losers with no lives who like to watch reality <laughs> TV and chat about it. Um, and I can see Lance Savali again. You I'm not joking. Not be I'm serious. not joking. He stopped with his dog on the corner of my street. Why does this keep happening when we do the real pod? He knows. He must know. He must know. He's an angel. Tell me what kind of dog we're talking about. Mid-size, small, big? It's mid-size. I'd say like a mixed breed. Mixed breed, uh, mid to large, chocolate brown with a little bit of white. Yeah. Not on a lead. I'll say that again. Say that again. But looks well behaved. Okay. Looks well behaved. He obviously got good recall, that dog, unlike my stupid dog, who... Won't come when he's called. Uh, that's, just, <laughs> that's just a little complaint from me uh, to a my dog. Pickle, just a earing, little pickle roast. Earing my woes. Do you think if you were to, say, go on a below deck um, charter as a primary, would you bring Pickle? Yes, absolutely I would bring Pickle. Do you think he'd have a nice time? He's got a little life jacket and all. Does he? Yeah, he's been on a kayak. Holy shit! Yeah, no. He'd, How did he, we not know this? He'd be great. Um, I would. I would do like it would be great telly, right? Pickle doing a poo in the jacuzzi or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it would actually. It really would. Oh, Even though I get seasick, the more I watch the show, the more I want to be a guest. You know, I'm like, 
it's I, 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 as long as there's no rough orders, then surely just a fine time. Yeah. Well, see, I have the opposite. I want to be. A, I want to be. A, I want to be on the crew. But you didn't want to be, on, be on the, the crew, crew before. That was me. And no, now... I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind because I. Oh, I mean, we'll talk about the anchor. Oh my but god! I'm fascinated with all the anchor stuff. The anchor, uh, yeah. Well, there's plenty to say on the anchor. Wow, you've really come to an exciting podcast, guys. We're going to be doing a <laughs> lot of anchor talk. Um, okay, we we pick up we pick up the episode where we left off with the the team trying to get out of the dock in the pitch black night. Um, very dramatic cliffhanger, and then of course, absolute non-event. Just got out and sweet as you know, and, yeah, and they're like, "Oh, no that was close," but it didn't feel that close. You know? No, it didn't. It didn't. They just like to keep reminding us. They're like, remember this captain? Yeah. He drove into a thing once. <laughs> and, the, and the guests were equally concerned as we were when they heard about this, about yeah. his, his run-in with some runabouts. <laughs> <laughs> and you would be. You would be, you know. But he was not at fault. No, no, no. Uh, I don't know who was, but it definitely wasn't the person driving the ship. It was the hydro <laughs> thing. Um, so who were the guests again? They're like, I don't know, they're some young folks. So they're really big they're on, on social TikTok. media and uh, just seem like a bunch of Aussies, you know, really different kind of clientele, super chill and easygoing, um, happy to be told what they're going to eat, which is always a point of contention and, you know, in yeah. the med, for example. I am slightly worried about this for the series moving forward that we're just going to have very polite Antipodean guests who are not going to kick off like the Americans. Ever. Well, I have to say that in the corner I, I have spied a corny or two who have watched ahead by means that I won't disclose. And mm. uh, and they say it's worth it. It's it, it's good, the guests, the, the, the crew, the whole lot. So, um, okay. you know, we might just be starting off softly, softly, which is a nice way to get yeah. to know the crew. And then we'll, we'll get into the great guests. But um, speaking of the corner, that is our Facebook page, by the way. It's called The Real Pod Corner. And you can find it by going facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Real Pod Corner. Also on the Instagram at the Spinoff Podcast Network. Okay. Share uh, the pod. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Tag your flatties. Below Deck is a great group viewing show. And look, if you haven't gotten on board yet, so to speak, um, then you now's the time. Now's the time. We've, you've got a Kiwi on there. She's great. She's so lovely. And She's so lovely. <laughs> and it's a good looking crew and it's just it's a it's a nice time. It's an escape. It's, we all need it's it. It's an ultimate escape, all out at sea. The international there's no laws at sea, are there? <laughs> no, there's none. <laughs> Just pirate law. Not a single Parlay. Not a single law. Okay. Um, I have to say, re the boat, because this is quite a it feels like quite a new boat. Mm. Um, I don't love where the jacuzzi is. Oh, the jacuzzi seems like it's tucked away, not out out on the aft deck. What's the aft deck? The aft, I don't know. <laughs> but Normally the jacuzzi should be somewhere where the crew can spy and laugh yeah. at the guests. <laughs> this one looks like it's kind of tucked in the doorway between like the main salon or something and the and the deck. Um, yeah. But aside from that, loving the crane, lifting the toys in, because that's just, that makes life easier, doesn't it, for the deck hands? Oh, we know, the toys, getting up early to get the toys out. And you know the guests are never going to use them. Haven't spied a slide as yet this season. No, well, we've barely been on the water yet. I know, that is true. <laughs> that is true. But do a slide to the land. I'll be very disappointed <laughs> if there's not like a whole slide issue every couple of episodes, you know? Yeah. I also like it when they get out that little, like, pool. It's like a pool that they put in the sea <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, like, just to keep people contained. <laughs> I love it. I love nothing more than a guest who gets carried away on a jet ski um, and goes too close to other leisure leisure craft. Uh, oh, yeah. Because yeah, there are roles. You know, we have been joking about pirate law and stuff, but you have to respect the, the channels, the channels. You have to, and you have to respect not else. hitting other people with your jet ski. Is the runabouts. The, the runabouts. <laughs> I know uh, here there's like some sort of like 200 metres from the, the sea, sea shore uh, <laughs> <laughs> or something, something like that. You can't you can't take your jet ski up to the I don't know or there's a speed limit or something. I'm not actually that nautical, um, surprisingly. 
But I think if you sing it, it makes it sound like you do know what you're Thank saying. Thank you. I was, going, I was about to go into <laughs> some sort of shanty and then I realised yeah. the only one I know is the, the Willow Man. <laughs> <laughs> Which is about whaling. Yeah. As their right. environmental spark had told right. us. Right. Good to know. Hey, uh, can we talk about the fact that Ryan at one point was sitting in the kitchen? So Ryan's a chef, chefy, as Aisha calls him just relaxing with his bare toes on the handle of one of the drawers. Oh, my God. I did not see that. Cannot believe you didn't pick that up. Horrendous behaviour. Bare toes? Like, what was he doing? It's like centimetres. Just, he was just sitting back, chilling, relaxing, having a chat, and his feet were centimetres from the countertop, but they were around a circular knob on a drawer. Foot around the knob? No. <laughs> and, <laughs> And it's COVID times, and I don't know how much COVID transfers from foot to to knob to knob to hand, but <laughs> it feels like it's it's dicey territory, you know. But I do wonder, Jane. Knowing what we know now about the germs, the hand washing, etc., maybe a foot is cleaner. Maybe it's than the a better hand. way to do it. Maybe we should be doing more things with our feet. Oh my god! In you're general, s- you're absolutely right. Call up Susie Wiles, yeah. would you please? <laughs> For on knob, hang up. <laughs> <laughs> no context. <laughs> oh, the guess at one yeah, point we're talking. He's, he's a loose unit. Sorry, <clears> there you go. Well, he's almost not a loose unit. He's almost like a very contained unit in that he's very restrictive in, in his menu. Yeah, he just doesn't care about the guests at all. I feel like this is going to become a problem at some point. But with this first mm. lot, they were into it. They were fine. At one point when at breakfast time, he decided... Eggs Benedict for all. And it did look like a yum Benny, I have to say. But they they were like, oh, what's the alternative? And uh, I can't remember who the stew was, but she said, oh, no, it's, that's the only option. And then they were like, okay. Yeah. Didn't even kick up a stink at all about not being given another option. I would kick option. up a mega stink. No, you wouldn't, Alex. If I was, if I, if I was paying that much. No, you wouldn't. No, I probably wouldn't. You absolutely would I'd be wouldn't. like, do you need any help? You would, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'd be like bloody uh, like, like Captain Jason. <laughs> Serving <laughs> yeah. everyone. Getting in there. But I don't like how it puts our girl Aisha in a tough position. It really like, does. Know, she, she really wants to just make the guests happy and they were happy and she's lucky that they're chilled out. But, you know, he, she has no alternative to provide. She can't even sweeten the deal with anything because he's like, it's bacon and it's eggs benedict. And it's coming out now. <laughs> Look, if you think about Captain Sandy, and by the way, in the corner, no one seems to like Captain Sandy. Divisive Captain. Yeah, I, 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 I did pick that up. I, you know, I, I'm into her. But anyway, she wouldn't have stood for that shit. She would be in that galley telling him, these guests are paying 80k to be on this charter. They get what they want to eat. Mm. The, the whole experience is, like, geared around the food. Um, yeah. So I don't know if, if Jason's super chill, laid back uh, captaincy is uh, how that's gonna how that's gonna ride as the season goes on. Mm. Especially when he's yeah, like you say, just keen to jump in and help out and bring out the burgers <laughs> aggressively, like when the guests aren't even remotely hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Ryan's control freak completely. At one point, the guests were talking about wanting not wanting to be tired, and I just thought that was extremely relatable. Like they've just paid eighty k for three days on this lovely luxury yacht with some eggs Benedict. And it's getting to the evening time and they want to get their money's worth and they're like fucked off that they're tired. Do you ever get that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I I feel that. You wanna be you wanna be in your prime for the whole thing. You experience. wanna be awake for the whole thing and be able to say, I want some I don't know, some ribs at three in the morning. Because when else That's, is that gonna happen <laughs> yeah. in your life? You know, like, wake up the chef. That's what always kind of makes me laugh. Or when, like, a charter just gets absolutely shit-faced and they'll have to go to bed at, like, seven. Yeah. And I'm like, you are wasting, like, basically the entire time on this boat. <laughs> but maybe that's what they that's want. That's what they want. They're know? not wasting it. They're just uh, using their awake hours in the time when normally they'd be asleep. Mm. But they're also fucking over the crew really badly and bound to bound to create some tension. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. true. Um, let, can we talk about Tumi's awesome table... Decor? Oh, yeah. So she's like an Instagram decorator lady. Yeah. I mean, roll over Bugsy. There's a, there's a new kid in town. Mm. Like, Bugsy's stuff, bless her, super tacky. Um, so if, if you're not familiar, <laughs> Bugsy features on uh, Below Deck Med. 
Toomey's kind of like she's on the she's on trend, you know. She is on trend. She is on trend for the millennial uh, aesthetic, and I liked I liked the kind of getting to know her sort of backstory. And that she said she hates what is it called when they have to like prowl the docks or whatever and just door knock on boats for jobs. <laughs> Cold calling. I don't know. Yeah, Dick cr- prowling. Dock, dock, <laughs> dock prowling. Dock. Dog prowling. She said, I hate dog prowling or whatever it is. So I decided to set up an Instagram account to show off how good I am so people would come to me and it worked. And I was like, shut out. It's amazing that you can get a job on a luxury yacht purely based on your skill of stacking teacups. Yeah. And putting some flowers around. Like, obviously t- table decor is like a hard skill for them to, uh, to, to track down and potential crew. Especially when I guess like you could have people who decide at the last minute that they want a circus, you know, like a circus <laughs> in the middle of the Mediterranean <laughs> or whatever. But yeah, it is quite interesting that there's like people come from such different backgrounds and skill sets. Like one of them's just a model, you know, yeah. that's what got her on the boat. It's like all good. <laughs> Look, this, the, the other thing is like when they go to, to different ports and the stews, the, the chief stew's calling in to be like, um, yeah, I need some decorations for... Who is she calling? Is she calling... You're not calling Look Sharp. Surely it sounds like there's a, there's a whole this. industry where there's like a a table decor, like last minute guest decor shop. She's like an OMG nest <laughs> of the Whitsundays <laughs> who's just there ready. With a little felt elephant, if you don't mind. That little green <laughs> elephant sat atop of an old timey book. I loved it. Mwah, beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Anything you want, <gasps> anything you want in the wet Sundays. Yeah, she's good. Jeremy knows what she's doing. The other thing that struck me as really strange was uh, Magda, when the guests went out to play in the water, and Aisha asked Magda, who's the third stew, um, do you want to stand on deck with me to do towels? And she's like, yes, definitely. I would love to do that. And I'm like, that is the kind of enthusiasm for a menial task we have literally never heard before. True. Like, Aisha's gotten That's very true. lucky with her stews. She's, she, she's cultivating, she's cultivating a lovely culture mm. in her, with her stews, the, a culture of friendship. I want to start, I would say. I want to start doing table decor at home, by the way. Oh yeah. I, might st- I could see you doing that. I might st- like just for meals at home, you know, like make yeah. it, that's, that's <laughs> my thing. And then I'll start up an Instagram account and people can see me free little felt elephants. I think it's a really good idea. It is a, it's a sense of occasion. It's a sense of fun. Watch this space. <laughs> what else happened? We learned a lot about Benny. Yeah, we did. This, we did. This episode. Um, we learned, so we, we knew that Benny had lost his parents um, in, in reasonably close succession last year. Mm. And we learned a little more about that. Uh, he lost his mum to cancer. Um, and we also learned that he's claustrophobic. Yes. Uh, shall we talk about, shall we talk about flaking the anchor? Should we get into the anchor star? Okay. The right has an agenda, the left has an agenda, and the Alternative Commentary Collective, they have an agenda too. If you had to go into lockdown over Christmas and New Year, but you're allowed to bring one person into your bubble, who would it be? Oh, Mary Sharapova? Sharapova, maybe not. The Agenda with G Lane, James Laconi and Matthew Heath. Download it for free today from iHeartRadio, New Zealand's number one podcast platform, the Alternative Commentary Collective, your home of sports entertainment. At Z, we're all about moving with the times. And now it's time to be part of the climate change solution and move on from fossil fuels. As a company providing fuel to people all over the country, we also know we have a real opportunity to lead that change. We're committed to keeping Aotearoa moving by providing the right energy for everyone. We believe that innovation in fuel and how it's used can make a huge difference to our planet. Find out more at z.co.nz. Winter is a great time to travel around New Zealand. If you're thinking about your next holiday, why not make it a road trip with Go See? Visit us at goseetravel.com today to find the rental vehicle to fit your holiday and get ready to explore. Okay, so what do we know about the anchor? This boat has an unusual anchor that is mostly like old-timey boats have it, right? Where you need to do something with the chain called flaking. So it seems like a manual process more so than we've seen before. Quite Usually you see an automated kind of like a like a spool situation that, that they turn mm. and, it, and it goes around like a cotton on a spool. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But in this one, you got to get got to get down below deck, literally, and go into a tiny little room with a snake handling stick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and like jab at the anchor. I mean, it doesn't look like it's going around in a circle to me. It looks like they're just jabbing it. No, it looks like an absolute dog's breakfast. Yeah. But they've got to maintain some kind of order with the chain, otherwise it gets tangled. And it looks like a very stressful job. And Jamie did a cool um, thing where he, he showed an example with a, a like a necklace chain. That's right. I did like that. And I thought this is helpful for me to understand because I am learning terms that I never knew in my prior life before I was at sea. Uh, and flaking, yeah. flaking the anchor chain is is something you and I know exactly what it is now. Well, it's a snake snake handler. Sort it's, of. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's the snake handler of the sea world. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's um as I've said before, the anchor thrills me. The anchor thrills me and chills me whenever anything happens with it. Like by the time that the anchor like fell off, have you seen that episode in Med where they had to cut the yeah. anchor and leave it? Yeah, and also Shocking. also the time it got super duper <clears throat> tangled and Joao and someone had to Colin or someone had to go underwater and like risk their lives trying to untangle it. Yeah, because they're like it's thousands of tons yeah. or whatever. <laughs> like it's heavy as. But just the fact of an anchor is amazing to me that it holds down that boat. Well, sometimes it doesn't. Again, in the med, they were starting to head towards the cliff face because they were getting some drag. They would drift back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. So so Benny getting down in with the, the anchor to flake was very exciting, but he did not have a very good time. He did. Today. It. And I, he wasn't wearing shoes, <laughs> which I think was like a big problem. <laughs> they don't wear shoes on the boat, though, do they? They will pad no. around barefoot. But I guess if you if, if you are going into a, a heavy anchor situation with the flaking, then probably a good idea to just pop on some slips or something. You know, just have some have some uh, some dock siders or something handy to you, so you yeah. can pop them on for that one task. Um, he was proper claustrophobic though. Like he, you, it was a proper panic set in before he was even near the little the littler of the the rooms uh, in which he yeah. had to go and. You could tell by his reaction that it wasn't just, uh, I don't want to be down here doing this. It was like an, an irrational fear. It was quite distressing, but it was also quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> when he was like, it's like, it's like a sausage mincer. <laughs> like freaking out that he was going to get minced like sausage, which... He sort of did. I mean, his toe, he did a toe injury. His toe did, was, you know, halfway to a sausage. Um, but yeah, he. the irony of it was that just before that, right, he had been quite condescending to Bratini and said, Bratini, you know, come Martini, what we do Lamborghini, Cristini. Cristini, Bratini, not Brit, not Brittany. Yeah, it strikes me as odd that she's not happy to be a Brit. I don't know why. I feel like Brit's fine. I feel like on deck, you got to get, you know, you got to have short snappy yeah. sometimes. Anyway. But um, no, it's Bettini. But yeah, Benny showed her in this quite condescending, patronising way, look at what we do with the anchor, as if she didn't know. And she did know, um, but he just assumed she knew nothing. But then also, then he went down and was unable to do it because of his paralysing fear <laughs> of small spaces. Uh, <laughs> it was interesting, though, I thought that the uh, tense exchange, exchange, the tension was very, very short-lived. And then in, in his In the Moment interview, he was like, it I feel icky inside that she thinks that I'm being condescending. Um, you know, I and, and it's just kind of like he genuinely felt bad that she called him out for that. And and in the end, they hugged it out and explained where they're both coming from. And I was like, what is this? Tell him, this is not Dr. Phil. I know. This is below deck down under. You're supposed to have a grudge against each other for the rest of the season now. I don't want all this nuance and understanding <laughs> between our crewmates. I don't want people to grow. <laughs> and I you know, also think it's a new crew on TV. They're probably thinking way more about how big the franchise is and they don't want to look like dicks mm. and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Whereas I think in the early seasons they were just like, whatever, just kind of shit-faced and screaming at each other. Can I just... I'm a little bit off piece, but I just want to bring up Hannah Hannah from Med's uh, accent because she's Australian, right? Like many of the people on this crew. Yes. But she has like a South African accent, doesn't she? Or like a kind of a... She does. It's 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 transatlantic. It goes <laughs> in all different directions. Sometimes she sounds American. Sometimes she sounds like a New Zealander. Sometimes it's South African. But when you've been at sea for as long as she true, has, Jane, true, you don't know your ass from your elbow. You make a valid from. point. Imagine not knowing your ass from your elbow. The it's sort of trouble that there. could get you into. <laughs> Do you ever get that thing when you like go to Australia for like a week and you come back and you've got a little accent? It doesn't matter where I go. I've got the accent. 
<laughs> and the thing is, I'm no good at accents, so it's a fun. It's a fun sort of couple of days when I return when I have a, a broad, <laughs> a, a broad Irish accent. Well, I have never been to Ireland, so that's that's a bad example. But I certainly, have actually heard you do that before, though. My Irish accent. Mm, it sounds like another country when I do it. I'm not going to do <laughs> yeah. it. Anyway, nice. I'm not going to. Change is as good as a holiday. Okay. So anyway, uh, what else is happening? Um, Oh, the guests at one point took a picture with their thumbs out their fly in the mirror, which I just felt like really, it felt to me like these guys didn't pay the full 80K. No, I think you're right. They were not making the most of it, were they? You can do that anywhere. Yeah, you can do that anywhere. And it's just a classic kind of, um, oh my God, we're paying 10K to do this thing. We get to be on the telly. Um, They couldn't find people who pay 80K. Let's take a photo in the mirror of our thumb sticking out of our fly. (laughs) (laughs) That classic, that classic vibe, you know? Yeah, we've all been there. <laughs> we have all been there. What about the um, well, the way we're diving, which was a gorgeous. Oh, that looked nice. It did look nice. Except and for, that will be a bigger point of difference for Below Deck Down Under as we spend a lot of time in the coral reef. I, I did get freaked out by Captain just talking very casually about sharks and stingrays that could kill you. Probably won't, but could and might. There's going to be some shark stuff coming. I think we've seen in the super tees, which yeah. I'm excited about. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, that, you know, any, any sort of uh, slight hazard is always played up big time. You know, if someone goes over on a jet ski, it's built up in the in the previews for the season again and again, and then you find out they've just, like, knocked out of their jet ski and um, and then climbed back on with their life jacket. Yeah. No, no probs. Well, someone's left the bloody bung open. The bung? Know. The bung. What's the bung? The bloody bung. The bloody bung on the jet ski. Some... Some bloody idiot. <laughs> Some sees it left it open and it got bogged down. Oh, with God. Wood. I know. Uh, other jet ski problems we could run into is a flat battery. Uh, mm. So one jet ski just left bobbing out in the ocean and another someone has to whip out in the tender or, uh, oh, or in another jet ski to tow it back in. God, it's full of action. <laughs> uh, and dinner is full of tacos. Yeah, beer. What was it? He was like, this is an Instagram thing, beer fried tacos, which, I, I mean, I'm not on Instagram anymore. Did you know about this? No, but I don't think I'm the kind of person who knows what's on Instagram, even though I'm on Instagram, if you know what I mean. Like, I have an Instagram account. It just, he just made it seem like it was like the front page of Instagram was beer fried tacos for all. I mean, I remember the TikTok, uh, like, ricotta uh, pasta or something, right. <laughs> you know, um, but that was a that was a while ago. It's probably the only one that sort of um, I have in, in my memory bank. But I, I believe it to be true. I just think it doesn't look like a fancy meal, and I'm sure it was yum, but it was <clears> just <throat> three tacos, you know. It was very funny that they pulled out the silver service for that. That they had to was come out crazy. It, it looks so stupid. It was the white glove, the Mickey Mouse gloves, and the synchronized putting down of plates. Um, it was amazing, but also. Uh, at one point, yeah, Sheffy went, uh, not Sheffy, Captain went down, helped serve up some, some food. I don't know what anyone else was doing. Yeah, and he, he joined them for dinner as well, didn't he? That, I don't know if it was that, that meal. I don't know. Oh, they, they, okay. Look, I was so drunk the whole charter, I don't remember hardly anything. <laughs> <laughs> I remember just taking photos in the mirror with my, my finger out my fly. But the, <laughs> the, the tension we're going to have is between the guests. Who's right? Who's right in the Ryan Aisha debate? of guests being seated before the chef starts plating or the guests being told your food's ready, come to the table. Aisha's right. I mean, that's the traditional way it's done. But part of me, if I was a guest, I'd be like, just tell me when dinner's ready and I'll be there because I want to eat it hot, you know? Right, but you shouldn't have, you shouldn't, the chef should not dictate the charter. The chef should not set the flow. Yeah, but it's the your chef charter, knows. Jane. You've the, paid eighty k to be there. I, I give permission for the chef to tell me when. Like, I'll tell them the time that I want the dinner. I'll have dinner around eight thirty. I'll make sure that I'm ready for eight thirty for dinner. You know? Yeah, because I think that's fine if you've established that's the dynamic. But what was different here is that the chef just started. No, right? they had, but they had given it. They, they always give a time. They always say guests are going to eat around mm. two, but the guests decide to jump in the jacuzzi. Uh, but you do get that. Yeah. You do get that. You do get that. <laughs> uh, I just I just think about me being the chef at home with my children, who admittedly paying absolutely nothing, you know. Really? Uh, so they don't have a, a lot of say. But I'm imagining a world <laughs> where I'm I'm waiting to plate for them to tell me, for the, them to, to be seated. 
Mm, they're skiving off to the jacuzzi. And they're you've in the, the jacuzzi, you're bloody playing with the kinetic espresso sand. Espresso martinis, and, oh, bloody just, lazy. <laughs> <laughs> just a, a, a nightmare. So I can understand his frustration. I am comparing apples with oranges, admittedly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it must be annoying when you've cooked something. Like I really fucked off when I've cooked something like nuggets and I put it out on the table and I'm like your dinner's getting cold get to the table your dinner just one more just one more round of this game mum oh the episode's nearly finished mum's like no it's hot now I've spent all this time making it for you Ryan's got some big mum energy going on or <laughs> little dick energy is uh, small dick energy as um, Aisha said that's right he does have heat lamps though hey I noticed which, that too which can like, go a long way yeah. so it's like, kind of like it's almost a non- event like just chuck them under the heat lamps for 10 minutes look I think that's a stopgap measure that isn't uh, it's not going to give you your premium result it's just in case of emergencies here's the heat lamp you know and he's lucky as well that he's been making quite like I don't know bog standardy food like just a burger if you were having for example a rare sirloin steak you wouldn't want to be putting that under the heat lamp would you Jay? he knows about steaks they went to a restaurant um the crew did after the charter finished and someone ordered some steak, and he wanted to speak to the chef about it because he's like, that is not, what, like, st- what, strip or something. Oh. Strippy something something. He was, uh, he was all head up, but he never actually did speak to the chef. But that would have been good if he managed to have, a, like, a bit of bit of beef, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> with the, <laughs> with the, sh- the, the boat chef versus the, the land chef, the, the terra firma chef. chef. Oh, my God, true. Should have more of that. Was that... Ryan, was it? No, wait, who's it? What's his name? Who's the guy who had to wear this shiny helmet? Benny. <laughs> the captain gave him. I was kind of unclear on the metrics of this prize. It was like a room for improvement helmet. It was something. basically the way the captain framed it, he kind of did it in a diplomatic way. But essentially, what it is, is uh, a prize for being the worst, but framing it as. Um, you know, here's an opportunity to improve, to learn and improve, you know? <laughs> and the prize is this, like, gorgeous, it's elaborate a disco, ball helmet. disco ball helmet. And I have questions about where did he get it from, how long has he been doing this bit, et cetera. Well, he did say that it was something that he picked up from a previous crew. Ah, oh, I see. So he's brought, it, he's brought it on board the Thalassa. Is that what it's called? Say. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, Benny not into it because he spent an hour doing his hair. And, you know, they were going to shore. They had an opportunity to perhaps meet some lovely young men and women. And uh, and he didn't want to he didn't want to flatten his hair out. It's a great way to – it's a great conversation starter, though. It is. Let's go bald head. I mean, Culver, <laughs> here is a character <laughs> that I think we yet to see reach his potential. <laughs> He is all about the tradition. He is so enthusiastic. He is doing push-ups and sit-ups in his spare time. <laughs> he is. We just keep keep um, harking back to his his time as a young fella playing football. We get that photo again and again. Like extremely yeah. American. Culver was the one who he 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 flaked the anchor in the end, didn't he? Of course he did. Yeah, of course he did. He's no flake, you know. <laughs> And in fact, Benny, yeah, Benny won that, but that award basically, I think, for his uh, lack of anchor flaking skills, didn't he? I think so. And you know, if it was in a real, pho- it was founded in a real phobia, so it's kind of stink. But it is. also, he did. He threw a big tantrum. He did. Uh, he should have been more honest about it, in my opinion. Jamie, yes. I said Jason, but I meant Jamie, the uh, the bosun, had him up at the dinner table about it, and uh, and said, like, when you when. When I tell you to do something, you got to do it. And and Benny was just like, no one tells me what to do. No. I do my own thing. So watch this space. That's going to go down real well. Yeah, that's great on a extremely hierarchical <laughs> <laughs> command-driven boat. <laughs> um, speaking of respect and so on, what about when Tommy and Magda had up Captain about his what star sign he was? Like flirting outrageously with him. Like so a couple of giggling outrageous. schoolgirls. <laughs> I know, and he's a Libra. He is. What does which that mean? I don't. I don't know. I thought you might know. Well, what it they means. said they said it means that he's a naughty. It's inappropriate. I don't agree with that in the workplace. I do not agree with that in the workplace, and I think the captain should not agree with that in the workplace. And once again, Sandy would definitely not have that. They'd be fired probably. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think Captain quietly loves it. You know, they they just cut to him in the moment of him sort of going like rolling his eyes, but in that sort of. I love it. I love it. Wayne. Yeah. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. Captain hasn't seen his daughter for a year or something. No, that was an interesting detail. And she lives on a resort in that the, he owns. In the Philippines? His, 
What? Is what? Yeah. <laughs> what is that like? I mean, just <laughs> sail over there, right? Like yeah. we're going on a bit of a long journey today, guys. Yeah. <laughs> just doing a doing a flyby or a um, sail by, really. Yeah. Um, otherwise. We also learned a lot about when Benny and Aisha were having their heart-to-heart, we learned a lot more about Aisha's background, which we knew it's a very tragic situation with her brother. She lost her brother when she was young, uh, and we learned about that when she was a, a stew on med. Um, but we also learned that Aisha's mum was an alcoholic and that mm. Aisha found her when she was eight years old, having had made an attempt at her life. Just And, and kudos to mum, being sober now for seven or eight years. But just Amazing. what a difficult upbringing and then to turn out so lovely. Amazing. I'm always impressed at how Aisha can just like, she's so open and she can just get so quickly into like very deep personal stuff, but it doesn't mm. feel like it feels so natural and, and, and normal. Like yeah. even in that mid season where um, I've got a, I've got an interview with her coming out on the spinoff which maybe will be up today if this is on Wednesday, when she calls out Jack really casually for making that rape joke, she always just kind of navigates these, like, very serious, yeah. intense things that I think would usually kind of, like, kill a conversation, you know, and make everyone feel awkward in a way that's just, like, so admirable. I just, yeah, really love her. She's also probably about five wines deep at that point, which probably helps a little bit. It does. <laughs> it generally does help you open up. Um, but, no, you're right. She does have an empathy and, a, and an ability to relate to people, which... Serves her really well. Like, I, mm. you don't hear anyone saying bad things about her, except maybe Never. Ryan, you know. We'll, we'll, he'll, he might be, uh, I don't know, I feel like they've got very different ways of working. And the chief yes. Jew chef relationship is a really important one on a boat. It is, Jane. Um, I do sound like I'm, it's quite serious, but speaking of chef, do you remember Nick Vial from the US Bachelor franchise? Of course. Normcore Nick? Normcore Nick. Chef yeah, reminds yeah. me of Normcore Nick before he had his Bachelor in Paradise glow up. Ah, oh, You look out for it next time. I will. Um, I will. Guests had a lovely time. Gave everyone about 2K New Zealand each. I did the currency conversion there for you. So that's, that's quite good. That's pretty good. It's a fat stack. I also liked another difference that we noticed watching it is like when they do the whole performative hand over the mm. tip, normally it's kind of like just sort of like, oh, thank you. And this one they were like, woo! Yeah. <laughs> As soon as they saw the money, it was, like, very uncool about it, which I like. Is the white, the unsealed white envelope a below-deck thing, or is that the way tips are always delivered? Like, is that just, like, if you're in the know, if you're in the scene, if you're a guest and you're going on a luxury charter, you know that you've got to bring a white envelope in your suitcase? I would be interested to know. And also, at what point, I mean, ATMs are hard to come yeah. by these days. It's like, do they have a stack of money and then they, based on the service, select how much they're going to give, you know? Yeah. They carry it around in a briefcase. Yeah. And if they're a bit, and if the service is shit, then they they just walk off the boat with an an extra few K tucked away in their, um, perhaps in their little travel. Duty free. Yeah. Or their little travel, what you you call it. Oh yeah. A little little flesh coloured travel wallet. (laughs) Yeah. Mm, You do get that. (laughs) I, I, what also concerns me, Ray, the big open envelope is like it can be blowy out there on those okay, decks. I mean yes. what if the cash just blew away I, I I swear everyone I've seen they're never sealed they're never sealed they're just flappy the the, the flappy envelope uh, <laughs> fold <laughs> the flappy shoe of the sea <laughs> deep, deep cut I think that's quite, that's kind of us I think so too I'm having fun though. I'm really, I'm, I'm really into this season. Oh, it's so I'm glad nice just this. watching uh, an hour of something. Just and, you know, it's just it's a lovely time. It is a lovely time. We've also got MasterChef starting soon and Dancing with the Stars. It's big reality. It's big what do you mean Dancing with the Stars? Dancing with the Stars just finished. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> Alex is just giving away all our secrets. <laughs> We may or may not be recording this before the Dancing with the Stars final, but what a night, wasn't it? A no. Oh, what a night. Oh, what a, what night. a night. shocking win. Was it, though? By Vaz. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's right. <laughs> oh, God. We're going to just have to put this podcast into, out to sea if it's not. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Please do tell your seafaring mates uh, that we, we're doing this Hilarious recap, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Despite not getting uh, announced as, as finalists at the Voyager Media Awards, awards can't believe 
that the Real Pod is an up for our best journalistic expose of the year. Well, next year we can submit Mike Puru's McChicken, Jane. That's true. So We've got a proper investigation to put forward. That will get us there, I reckon. Uh, and thank you, T.I. here for doing what you do, for steering the ship. Um, being Holding it down. The real MVP. Flaking the, flaking the audio anchor. No bloody uh, disco helmet for you. Uh, no way. No. Duncan, Duncan gets the disco, gets helmet, the this disco week. helmet this week. Can we award the disco helmet every week? This yes, week is yes, 100% absolutely. Duncan. <laughs> he promised us he was going to be, I think even in last, was it last week? No, in our last uh, Dancing with the Stars recap, we said, don't worry, Duncan's going to be here for the grand final of Dancing with the Stars and for Below Deck. And, <laughs> so and Duncan's like, you don't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. Thank you very much. And we will catch you, uh, we'll catch you next on the next charter. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye. From the Spin-Off Podcast Network, you've been listening to The Real Pod, with very special thanks to Nando's. It was hosted by me, Jane Yee, along with Alex Casey and, most of the time, Duncan Grieve. Tiahe Butler made it all sound good, and Rachel LaRue got us out to the world. Make sure you visit nandos.co.nz for some delicious kai. Just quickly, if you enjoyed this podcast and value what we do at The Spin-Off, please consider joining The Spin-Off members. All our mahi is made possible by our members, and we wouldn't be here today without their support. Totoko mai and head to thespinoff.co.nz slash members to sign up. Kia ora, this is Toby Manhire, here to urge you to tune in to Gone by Lunchtime, a podcast with me, Annabelle Lee Mather and Ben Thomas, tackling the world of New Zealand politics, from policy to polling, from scandal to psychodrama. Listen to Gone by Lunchtime, brought to you by the Spinoff Podcast Network, wherever good pods are sold. Are you curious about how business can be better? I'm Simon Pound, and I host Business is Boring, a podcast where I caught it all with some of the most interesting people in entrepreneurship, commerce, and making things happen. Tune in to Business is Boring every Tuesday, brought to you by the Spinoff Podcast Network in partnership with Spark Business Lab. The Spinoff Podcast Network.